I think we are ready to start. So, uh, Martin, the stage is yours. Uh, whenever you're ready, you have 15 minutes, five minutes, you know, before the end, I'll give you a heads up. Um, yeah, so you may commence. Good luck. Okay, well, thank you very much. So don't worry, I'll just start my stopwatch now, so I'll know. Um, and so thank you very much. Uh, my name is Martin Peacock, and thank you to um, to TechBlick for introducing or um, for inviting me to speak um, this afternoon. So um, I believe there's a meet the speaker slot ar around about 4 p.m. Central European time. So hopefully I'll be able to make my way to that room as well. Um, so today I've only got 15 minutes, which is really a bit of a big task because I do want to talk about, um, you know, printed wearable sensors and applications in sports and athletics, which is quite um, quite a thing to say in 15 minutes. But really two main themes that I'm going to talk about today. Um, I'm going to talk about the conversion of printed um, materials and specifically printed electronics into um, biosensors. And then I'm going to um, also talk um, then a bit more specifically about measuring analytes in athletes. And even more specifically, I'll, I'll um, touch upon sweat and touch upon lactate in sweat. Um, so there's two big themes. First of all, we will be talking about um, how to make a biosensor using essentially building upon printed electronics and then you know how they're actually are then applied. Um, just a very quick slide on Zimmer and Peacock. We launched in 2014. Um, today we're 85 um, people, and um, we're ISO 13485, so we are certified for medical um, diagnostic development and manufacturing, and we do that as a contract. So uh, most of our revenue comes from contract development and contract manufacturing of electrochemical biosensors. And I will, there'll be quite a lot of technical content um, to this presentation this afternoon. Um, including exciting subjects like amperometry, voltammetry, potentiometry, and impedance spectroscopy. Um, just to say, you know, as part of the background to the business, the biggest facility we have is 4,000 square meters, and we're primarily located in, U um, in Norway in the UK, though as you expect, you know, we have sales from um, Australia to um, California, and clients from um, in the same geographical zones. So we do have multiple sites. Um, I'm sitting in um, the photo that I'm just highlighting here, that's just where I'm actually sitting at the moment. But we have, this is our main manufacturing site, but we do also have um, R&D sites, both in Norway and in the UK. Um, so we're kind of fairly distributed um, between the two countries. Um, I am going to use the word electrochemistry quite a bit this afternoon. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with electrochemical techniques, just to say very quickly, we do have a couple of free um, resources online. If you're generally interested in learning about um, printed sensors, printed biosensors, then we do ZP's websites and YouTube channels are a good place to go. But anyway, I just want to say, look, there's something called the ZP Academy. There you'll find introduction to biosensors and electrochemical techniques for biosensor developers. Um, they've got a very good price because those I think those two courses are free. Um, and I'm also happen to be in Norway because we've just done a two day workshop on wearable biosensors and continuous glucose monitoring. So I just want you to know that there's also a whole bunch of workshops that ZP um, offers um, as well, and they're in-person workshops and as well as online. Um, so I'll go quickly and get to the, to the meat of it. So I'm talking today about printed sensors for sports and athletics. And when I say printed sensor, um, for example, this is one of our um, printed sensors. This object is seven millimeters by, tw by 25 millimeters. And, um, in that kind of format, this is printed on a sort of polymer, so it's flexible. You know, we make glucose sensors, we make lactate sensors, we make cortisol sensors. Now, some of these sensors are enzyme-based, things like glucose oxidase, lactate oxidase. Um, some of these are dehydrogenases. So what we end up doing is taking these printed electronics and putting um, enzymes um, upon them. Um, we also put things like ionophores upon them. So this is a potassium sensor. It's what they call a potentiometric sensor, um, and it uses ionophores. And I will have slides on what is an enzyme sensor, what is an amperometric sensor, what is a potentiometric sensor, what is an ion selective sensor, what is an ionophore. Sodium sensor is very similar to the potassium sensor. We also do um, sensors or electrodes for measuring conductivity. So if you ask, the, if you're trying to answer the question, what's the osmolality of 
a athlete sweat 